Okay, welcome back. Today's episode, I'm going to be looking at the Super Nintendo. Now, upon first inspection, of course, you can tell it's already dirty. It looks like it wasn't taken care of at all. It's a little yellow. Hopefully, I can remedy that. And if I look at the back here, it looks like the power port is broken. This seems to be one of those rare WA serial numbers. Usually, NTSC regions start with UN. Okay, so now I'll pop in my burn and test cartridge. It's just a reproduction cartridge of what Nintendo used back in the day to service Nintendos. And of course, I get nothing. So now it's time for disassembly. Okay, I unplug the power switch and unplug the AV cord, turn it over, and just of course, six screws. For as long as I've been doing this, it's always a surprise when you lift off the cover and see what's on the inside because it's always different. Every system either has bugs, dust bunnies, some are even pristine, but you never know what you're going to get. In this case, of course, we got this big dust bunny in it, a little bit of dirt. It's not the worst though. Okay, in the case of no power, I'm going to be testing this fuse. I'll start by unplugging the power switch just to get it out of the way, and of course, I'll get rid of this dust. Okay, to test the fuse, you want to set your multimeter to continuity test, and you should be able to hear a beep when you touch these two probes together. If the fuse was good, you would hear a beep here. In this case, it does seem as though the fuse is dead, so I'll swap that out. So the fuse that's in there is a 1.5 pico fuse. I'll just trim the legs on this fuse so it'll fit better. It seems as though I lost the footage of me putting it in. All I did was heat up both pads and the fuse lifted right off. And of course the fuse is good now. So I'll add the power switch and plug everything back up and try to test it. And after all that, I still don't have any power. Okay, back to the multimeter. I set it to DC voltage and test the input pin here. It should be between 9 and 11 depending on your power brick and the output should be 5 volts. And of course, nothing on the inside and nothing on the outside. Okay, it seems as though I have to disassemble this whole thing. I gotta remove all these screws and to get a better look at this board. And of course I'll pop off this eject mechanism, it should just pull right off, and this top shield. Okay with the board free I can get a better look at it and I can test the input pins on the bottom of this board. Okay so now I'll set my multimeter back to DC voltage and test right on the first input of this board. And I should have exactly what the output of this power brick is. 9 volts and I don't. Now I know my power brick is good, I just tested it with another unit. So I'll just remove this heat sink right off just to get an even better look at the board. Now after about 10 minutes of trying to figure out what was going on, it turns out that these pins in the inside of this plug here are just too spaced out that they're not making any contact with the end of the power brick plug. So I'll just use a needle nose pliers and try to squeeze them together and see what happens. So now I'm finally getting 9 volts on the input and 5 volts on the output. Okay, let's plug up the controller board and see if we can get the power indicator to light up. Ok, 
Okay, moment of truth. And it lights up. And it works. So now I'm going to run the burning test. This just tests various hardware on the Super Nintendo. Well, it seems as though it passed everything. So it looks like this unit is working. Okay, so now I'm gonna disassemble the top to clean it and hopefully retro bright it. Okay, so now with everything in the sink, I just add some soap and water and scrub everything clean. Okay, so the unit cleaned up nice, but it's still a little discolored, so I have to retro bright it. So I'm just going to be using simple hydrogen peroxide that you can get in a drugstore, and I'm going to fill up this tub with eight of these bottles, and hopefully it'll work. So I didn't want to add water to the hydrogen peroxide, I didn't want it to get diluted, so I just filled up water bottles to raise the liquid level a bit and I put one water bottle on top of the top shell to keep it under the peroxide. And then I just taped a piece of plexiglass to the top. Now keep in mind the Super Nintendo wasn't bad to begin with, but it was discolored slightly and now you can see after four hours there's no discoloration. Maybe there's still a little bit, but not much. So far I'm very happy how this turned out, now I'm just going to reassemble everything.
Okay, off camera, I scrub the board with some alcohol just to clean it up a bit. And this heat sink goes on with three screws, so I'll put them on right now. Now for this eject mechanism, I tried to get the best shot I could. You just want to tuck this spring right into this hole on the post here. And it should fit right into place. Now for the top shell, we're almost done here. I'd like to give a little test to the power switch and the reset switch to make sure everything's in place and correct. Okay, with everything assembled, it just looks brand new. I mean, there's still imperfections, but it's much better than before. Here's a comparison. This is before, and of course after. And it's night and day comparison. The yellowing is really predominant right here, before and after. It's much better. There's still a smudge on the case. It wouldn't come off. I suspect probably with Goo Gone, I can get it off but I'm not going to worry about it. Anyway, thank you for watching.